Hey guys, welcome to another video in my home lab series. In today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, containers and how to actually use them in GitLab. Um, mainly how to build and enable the container repository in GitLab because it actually does have a container repository. So you can actually build customized containers to use it however you want. Um, this is useful for when you have to like build a container to actually like do your build deploy with special packages so you can build it into your container and then use that container to do it so that you don't have to always reinstall every single time you have to run a certain build to maximize um, productivity. So um, also this video is sponsored by me, myself and I. So if you enjoy the content that I create, feel free to send me an email in the description below. If you want to sponsor me, send me some free swag or send me some free hardware. Um, I enjoy building things and putting things together so my home lab can always use more additions. Um, and, but without further ado, let's get started guys. All right, so with this, um, so we got our GitLab server, everything is all neat and dandy there. So the first thing we want to actually do is actually open up a terminal because we need to SSH into the box um, and edit a few things in the configuration to actually enable um, the GitLab repository. So let's SSH here. All right. So what we want to do is actually edit the GitLab GitLab RB file, which is essentially the GitLab configuration file. Um, a few entries that we will need to update is the registry external URL. So here you can see it's just set to HTTPS registry.example.com. And obviously that is not what our uh, registry URL would be. So what we'll actually do is gitlab.dragon.local and we'll use port 5000. Um, is port 5000 a, a port that you need to specifically use? No, you can use any any port. 5050, 5000 and 5050 are essentially the two ports that I would usually see. Um, for like default configurations, but you can use any port up to your description. Um, also, please note that it says HTTP because we only have HTTP configured on this. If you actually had HTTPS, you would put HTTPS in this case. Um, then we'll also need to enable the registry. So down here, we can uncomment that. Um, the hashtags are comments. So essentially uncommenting means that that line is actually going to be um, configured and used. So. Um, next thing that we will need is the registry HTTP add-R. Um, so we'll actually also want to set this. So this, this is how you can hit GitLab um, and how you can hit the repository. So by default, it's actually set to 127.0.0.1, which is essentially itself. So it can only talk to itself, but we want other things to hit it. So because we have like GitLab runners and other things on different IPs that would need to hit it. So in this case, we'll just open up zero 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 um, which essentially opens it up to any anything could hit it um depending on what your security concern or standard is in your environment um you might not want this but because this is my home lab this is in a controlled environment we can do this so um just depends on what what your use case is but in this case for my home lab not not too big um also we want to disable nginx um registry um, otherwise, it won't it won't work. So give me one second. Engines. And it's actually right down here. So we'll just uncomment that. So it says uh, registry Nginx enabled and we're going to leave it as false. And that's all you need to do right there. So what we'll do is we'll do um, GitLab control reconfigure, which will essentially reread the file and reconfigure GitLab to what those specs are. Um, so we'll let that go. It'll, it'll take a few few seconds here. While that goes, we will actually create a new project um, and we'll name it like container um, and we'll do like CentOS 7 here. Um, the reason why we're going to do CentOS 7 instead of CentOS 8 is because there's something weird with the CentOS 8 container and, and the YUM repositories don't work on it, so it actually breaks. Um, found it out the hard way. So we're going to just use build a CentOS 7 container. Does it really matter? No, not really. It's really up to you at the end of the day what type of base container you want. In this case, I'm going to just do a CentOS 7. So we'll initialize this. Where that goes. That's still going. 
Okay, so now now we got a, a repo for the central scaling container. Um, so the thing with this is um, Canico. We're, we're going to actually use utilize Canico to actually build our Docker image in GitLab. Um, the reason for this is because Canico actually solves the, the problem using Docker within Docker because we're using Docker containers to run the build to build a Docker container, which is kind of like Inception. Like if you've ever seen the movie Inception, it's kind of like, you know, a dream within a dream, but in this case it's Docker within Docker. Um, it doesn't work out very well Docker within Docker um, because you have to like enable privilege mode and there's other like penalties because it's it 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 wasn't built to be used that way, right? So in this case, we're gonna use Canica, which is kind of like a um, other utility to, to build it, which is actually super nice. Um, so there's this documentation here. So I actually have it on a separate sheet of what I currently have to make it work in a GitLab pipeline correctly. Um, but for, for what I have, it's a little bit more general, um, uh, well, more specific than this, this is a little bit more general. So when you go through this, you can go through this, see what your steps are, compare it to my steps. Um, but we're going to essentially do something very, very similar to this. Um, but it's up to you to how you want to change how, you know, the build or the deploy works, right? Um, but we're going to essentially utilize Canico, which will be actually a lot of fun. And I've built a lot of images with this. Okay, so GitLab was reconfigured. So now we actually want to just give GitLab a quick restart here. Uh, restart so that it applies all all the things um, and looks good um, this is also the moment of truth when you restart it and it does come back up you know you miss something in the configuration so I'm hoping it comes up and I didn't actually miss the configuration run 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 and while it restarts you would be able to see that it's just taking some time. This is this this error is actually better because um, if you don't configure it correctly, um, because I've done like not not disabling nginx, and then you just get a like redirect loop and it just, just doesn't work. This actually this page actually is a voice of confidence for me because this means hey GitLab is just starting up and this is this like hey error page that's still starting up, which is good in my opinion. <laughs> um, because it means I didn't completely break it. Um, so we'll we'll give it a few more seconds here, um, and look through. But yeah, Canico, it, it's great. You can do Docker within Docker. Um, it's a little bit harder. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, the other way to actually do it um, would be to create a GitLab runner that isn't Docker, but is like an actual machine, like a virtual machine or an EC2, and then create the Docker image in there because you have Docker installed on that um, machine. Um, that would be the other way to do it. All right, now we got the slow spin and we're back, easy. So we're gonna open back this, this back up. Um, so the thing with here is over here, and I think the deploy, there's the container registry. Um, so we'll look at that later um, because that's where we will be able to find the container. So, we're actually going to just edit this in the web IDE because there's only just a few configuration files, nothing too big. So the first thing that you'll need to know is Docker file. Uh, the Docker file is essentially the file that is used for, hey, how do I want to build my container? So in this case, we're just, we just want to build it from CentOS 7, right? Um, we'll run some commands. Um, because the first one will be just to update the server because it's the base minimal um, and it's not necessarily always the, the latest. So you want to make sure it updates with all the packages. And then for example, we'll actually like um, install like zip and unzip to just show that you that this is like another step. Um, the, the reason for this is essentially you can build this to however you want it, um, whatever packages you need. Um, this is kind of like a good template for like a build image. Um, because for example, like say you're building like a Java application or like you're building any application and you create an artifact. Um, and in that case, it's usually a zipped artifact or some kind of compressed artifact. So by default, zip isn't installed because there's a minimal install um, on the Docker container. So you, you want to install it so you can actually zip, you know, all the contents and create the artifact from it. Um, so essentially you can do it however you want. In this case, we're just going to update, install zip and unzip. Um, the next thing that we'll want to do 
is create the GitLab CI file. So this is this is the more interesting one, right? Um, because this one we will have to configure. Hey, how does it utilize the doc file? How does it create the the image? And then how does it actually deploy to our container repository? Um, so the first thing that we will need is actually to grab the executed image. Um, this is also all in here. Um, so there's a debug executor. So everything is more or less in here. I'm just copying and pasting from where I have it essentially. Um, so we'll be using the Canico specific image. Um, we will also um, essentially have two stages. So we have a build and a release stage. So the reason why I'm doing two different stages is because say for example, you want to build a container, but like you're building it step by step where you're like, okay, I'm gonna have this command run and then have this command run and, and, and build in a separate pipeline. Um, because sometimes when you're trying to, you know, build a container and you have like 500 steps, you don't want to add all 500 steps and then figure out what you want to work, right? You, you add like the first like 20, you go, okay, all these work and then you add the next 20, but you don't want to actually create an image from, you know, the first 20 steps because they're still missing the other, you know, hundreds of steps. So in this case, you can run the build uh, stage that will just build every commit and then just make sure that your image is building correctly and then have a release stage where it actually releases when you're ready to actually release from a build. Okay, so in our build stage here, um, uh, we'll have build, um, we'll have this, the script, which essentially is just how you, um, the commands to run to build it. So in this case, we're going to create Canico Docker. Uh, so we'll make, we'll make that directory. Um, the next thing we'll actually need to do here is, um, echo a few parameters into this directory. So, um, in this case we have, um, the auth, this, the, the GitLab registry. So, so these CI variables are actually GitLab specific variables, um, which will auto populate in here. So this is essentially just setting the registry, the username and password to be able to access the repository into the config.json. Um, this was just one way that you can do it. There's multiple other ways to do it too. Um, so don't sweat it too much if you end up doing it a different way. Um, and then the next part here is we will actually want to run the Canico executor, which essentially um, will create the registry image, it won't push it, but it'll cache like each each location of the image, but it won't push. And then it will create a Docker file, uh, read off the Docker file and then put it in um, the destination of the commit based off the commit ref. Um, so that is essentially the build, nothing too fancy, just a simple command to kind of build. Um, now, the thing with this is we want this to only run um, on a commit, right? So how we do that is we utilize the rules. Rules is essentially like an if statement, right? If so, you can do rules if uh, ci commit branch. So in this case, if there's a, if, if if there's a commit on that branch on that commit, it will run this. If there's no com if there's no new commit, it won't run it. So this is kind of a unique way for um, CI/CD kind of pipelines to kind of work through, um, and allows you to kind of do things so that it's not like oh I just run everything back to back. It's oh I only run this when I need to run it, right? Um, so we'll do the same thing with the release, um, and I'm gonna just copy and paste what I have, and then talk about it. Um, because that'll be the quickest. So we got the stage. So this is the release stage. We do the same thing here for the first two lines. And then the last line, we have the same thing, um, but we take out the no push because we actually want to push this into the repository. Um, and then instead of the commit ref name, we use the commit tag. Um, and in this case, you'll kind of understand it a little bit better when I kind of show you it. Um, but how containers are tagged is they are actually are used via so so you have like um in like the docker file we have the this is the tag centos 7 sent os and then the tag is 7 right um so in this case we're gonna try to kind of mimic how gitlab does tagging and utilize that sort of tagging for how we do it in um gitlab uh yeah how we do it in gitlab so the thing with this is when we want to release, we'll just create a commit tag. Um, so this will only run when a commit tag is created. All right, so with that, let's commit. 
build image. We'll commit to main, continue. It's committing. And then we will now get to see this pipeline run here. So there's multiple ways you can actually see this pipeline run. Um, you can actually go to what I just did um, in the project where um, in the because it's on the main branch, you go to the branch, there's the pipeline that will always show up here. You can click here. You can also go to build pipelines and then you can see it also running. So you can see that there are stages. So in this case, you can see that there's only one stage, build stage. You don't actually see the release stage. And that's because we use the rules and you essentially, it, it won't run that. So you can see here, um, you know, it, it downloads the Canico image and then starts doing the stuff that it needs to do. Um, it'll, it'll get through essentially most of it here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, but we can explore while we, while we wait for that too. So um, when, it, when it does finish deploying here though, um, you can see there's this container registry um, where it will be able to build a container and tag it in here. So then, then you can utilize it in any of your other builds. Um, we will actually be doing a separate video for that where we actually utilize um, this container to use for a build slash release um, for a, 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 my next video probably. So um, stay in tune for that because that'll be a lot of fun. All right, so let's go back to build pipelines. So now, now you can see that it actually goes through what my Docker file had, right? So it does the yum update. So you can see right here, there's a yum update. It goes to the yum update. And then installs, 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 lots of updates. So it updated all those. Then you can see it actually installs zip and unzip here. So that's, that's my next step here. So install zip and unzip, and then it's done. So it fully finished. It, in the case of an error, it would actually error here and the pipeline wouldn't show green, it would actually show red. But in this case, um, everything installed successfully, no issues. So now you're like, all right, so the build works, how do, how do we do a deploy? So in this case, what we're going to actually do is go to code, go to tags, and create a tag. So in this case, the name the name of the, the of the container will always start with the repo name. So in this case, container hyphen CentOS seven, and then the tag will just be whatever you want it to be. Um, in this case, we'll just do latest. So if we were to ever reference this, it would be CentOS. Uh, it would be container hyphen CentOS seven colon latest uh, to reference this image. So now you can see that I created this tag, but you have to actually go to pipelines and wait for it to finish building. So you can now see that a new pipeline popped up and that it's the release stage and as opposed to the build stage. So you can see that it grabbed from the cache layer and then created the image. So it pushed the image to CentOS, uh, container CentOS 7 hash, hyphen latest. So you can actually go here, go to container, uh, go to here and you can see that there is a latest tag down. So if you ever want to utilize this tag, you should be able to just type in this um, into it. So essentially, if, if you were to like do a GitLab CI in, in, in this case, um, let's just go here real quick. If we wanted to utilize a different image, we would, we would essentially update this image here and put that and it'll grab our new image. Um, but we're not going to do that in this one because this one needs to use the Canco image. <laughs> so with that, that is how you essentially uh, enable the container repository in GitLab and create containers using Canco in GitLab. So if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.